Using raw drums can be a difficult prospect. For example, you typically don't have as much control over the natural snare as you do the snare sample. However, in this clip, Jens shows you a clever way to have independent control over the snare ring and attack so you can use this in parallel and create an awesome snare sound. Check it out. Let me do something to the snare here. Uh, I'm gonna do that on the 545 and duplicate it. Exactly the same with audio, with the plugins. And then I wanna create something that I call the uh, snare ring track. Now there is no, not so much ring to be found here. So maybe this is completely in vain for this song, but this is a very common thing that I would do. And then I would take this transient shaper and then I would get rid of all the attack and just leave the sustain in there. So if that's only bleed now, then I should probably ditch this ID. But uh, let me see what happens. Ring, uh, uh, punch, no punch. Sustain, oh yes. In this current scenario, I don't want to hear anything else. I'm going to take away the uh, rhythms. Yeah, speaking about destroying your <laughs> hearing. So there's mostly bleed in there. Uh, normally this would cause like the ring to come through. Since we don't have any ring here, uh, it doesn't really do the same thing as uh, it usually would, uh, which is just bring out all that sustain in an excessive way. But there's still something in there. So let me still try this before you rule me off completely. Uh, and then what I would do is that what I have to actually like EQ, it doesn't work to gate it, it would defeat the purpose, but I'm gonna EQ away the disturbing treble uh, or symbols. Let's then see if I can find where I have some sustain in the snare. And that would have to be in the mids, not in the very fundamental frequency here around uh, 180, 180 to uh, 220 hertz, depending on the tuning. I guess on this one, maybe we even down at uh, 170 or something, 160. Oh, 140. So very low tuned snare. Yeah, so some, somewhere here in the mids where I can find a little bit of sustain going. Let's see how that sounds if we, if we mix that into the, um, to the snare channels. Let's listen with the overhead and room as well. As you, as you can hear, we have this like center length 
in the track that gets gets added at this rate that i'm putting it in now or at this level it would usually be pretty extreme but since there's so little to actually extract in this one you know you're starting to hear like the boom and uh, uh, interesting things in there and it's usually interesting how well it works to to add it in the bleed usually no issue in those frequencies as long as you have eq'd out the treble uh, like i did here so this would be a very different kind of effect than if you would on the main snare just would eq more of that mid the eq the the, the snare would just sound like it's getting um, boxy or you know mid mid soundish but if you take a, take away all the punch or, or transient information and just add that to the sustain where the ring is at or the like the room sounds then uh, you get a length in your drums that is uh, really cool you could also try this to to samples or whatever the the cool thing is that it works really well on um, naturally recorded drums and uh, sometimes i would do it like this that i have one ring like that and then i do a second one that i call attack so i have one ring one attack and on the attack one, I would not use this EQ, that's for sure, but I would use the same plugin. I would then just bring down the sustain and up the punch and then find a level and uh, the slow and fast attack time to find a, a good spot where it sounds punchy and nice. Just, which is usually not the fastest one. Something like that. And that way I have one ring and one attack. That I can add into the main snare. And if you pair that with the bottom microphone, I'm gonna do this thing where I move, since that's the exact same signal now, now we're talking about up in the like 18, 19 case, so it's not really gonna be hearable. It's different when you have a full full kit, but I am gonna put just a default setting, nothing done to it on the main snare so that I get this, make sure that the oversampling uh, filter is, is in phase with each other. So if you blend that in tastefully, you have two like pretty powerful tools to um, sustain or attack your snare depending on um, what's needed. Here, there's so much attack in the snare on the on the chorus, so it's not doesn't feel like a need. But sometimes, if you have a drummer with a poor rim shot or just you know doesn't sound like edgy or smacky enough, this can be a like a super super tool to do this in in parallel, which is a completely different experience than if you would just do a little bit of it on the main main track. <laughs> 